the battery died. <coughs> Which was quite sad. So, John's Gospel and the fifth chapter, or chapter five. And we're reading from verse five, and it's a title to my Bible that says, The Healing at the Pool. Okay, here we go. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now, there is in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida, which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralysed. And one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. That's a long time. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he'd been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the water when the water stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured or healed. He picked up his mat and he walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leaders said to the man, they said to the man who had been healed, it's the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, the man who made me well said to me, pick up your mat and walk. So they asked him, who is this fellow who told you to pick it up and walk? The man who had healed had no idea who it was. For Jesus had slipped away into the crowds that was there. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, See, you're well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So the man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. Wow, absolutely amazing. So Lord, we thank you for your words and just pray the Holy Spirit you'll just enable me to um, speak well and just to share this wonderful word. Amen. 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 So, here's a, here's a bit of a challenge. Here's a bit of a challenge. Oops, let me turn this. There we go. Here's a bit of a challenge for you. What are the problems that you personally are, are facing today? Because it, because it could be things that you have, um, have been suffering or, or chewing over for many, many years. And I know that I do. I've, I've got one or two little things, you know, where, where I just haven't sorted things out you know, for many years. And I've prayed and I've prayed and, and I've, you know, and sometimes I think, oh, I still can't get this right. Wow. So that's kind of like the problem or whatever it is that we face. It's kind of become part of our life. It's like having a tattoo or something, you know, where it's there, you know. And uh, then you look at it and you think, oh, you know, um, I wish I didn't have it or I'm glad I had it or whatever, you know. But this problem has become part of our life routine. And we have the same thing which kind of jumps up every day and, and gives us no peace. It could be the same sickness, the same situation, or the same circumstances. So basically, we need to change from those things. And I don't know about you, but there are things that I am crying out for a change in my own life. You know, and, and maybe this could be the day that we start to, as a church, begin to think to ourselves, OK, maybe these things don't have to stay as they are. Maybe those problems we have, maybe we can put them on side. Maybe those um, fears can be slung out with the rubbish bin. Maybe, you know, maybe those, those situations that we're frightened of, maybe we can stroll into them. You know, you're, like, uh, you're like a big, tough person you know, you're who's not frightened of anything. You know, some situations which we face that, that still being frightened by something, that we can go and you know, look the enemy in the eye and say, do you know what? I'm not frightened of you, big man. You're coming down. Sometimes God will bring us to that position where we have to confront some of these things in our life. And, but I don't know about you, but when I face some of these things, I, I tend to think to myself, how can this change? How can I change from this situation to a much better be, a much better position? Now just think about this. If you have somebody who has a drink problem, and I, I used to have one many years ago, um, you know that if you can stop that drinking, that your life will change for the better. One, you'll have more money which is true, but also your health will get better, you will prolong your life, um, you won't be such a you know, pain in the bottom to other people, you, you, know, you won't get into trouble, all those kind of things. You know all of that, yet for many people, 
they just think, do you know what, I can't change. Because often we can't change on our own strength. We need God's help to help us change because it comes from the heart. And that's, and that's the important thing. So change is hard to achieve and I think we you know, probably all recognise that. But here's a challenge for us, each one of us. And what you've got to remember is, is that every time that I preach, every single time, I'm always including myself in the sermon. You know, don't ever think for, you know, don't ever think for a second that I've got it 100%. I'm always preaching to myself as much as you. So here's a challenge. Do you want a change in life today? Do you want the change in your life today? Now, there's a, there's, a, uh, there's a scientist, you may have heard of him, called uh, Sir Isaac Newton. Anybody heard of him? Uh, he, um, I was going to say that he invented gravity, but he didn't, you know, because God invented the gravity. But, uh, uh, but Sir Isaac Newton, he came up with the laws of gravity about you know, how fast things fall, all that kind of stuff. Really clever fella, right? He, he really was. And he wrote a series of laws and... He put down that the first law of motion, right, a scientific law, states, and I had to look this up, everything continues in a state of rest unless it is compelled to change by forces impressed upon it. So basically what that means, if you have a ball and you put it, oh no, let's suppose that we put a ball down here, right, that's going to stay there. Well, that's not going to move. I can't go, you will move, ball, like something from the Avengers or some you know, mystical power to, you know, to make it move. It's not going to happen. The only thing that will cause that ball to move is if you put a force against it. So, you know, if I say to Lyndon, just jump over here and just, you know, flick that ball or give it a good old kick, that, you know, then the ball's going to move. Yeah, exactly, a good one. You can, leave the, you can leave the door open and the wind will blow up, but that's still a force, isn't it? So that's the only time that things will change, when there is a force helps you to move. And in our cases, when we need to have that change for that problem, it is the power of the Holy Spirit of God which causes us to change. And so this morning, I just want to, it was afternoon rather, I want to talk about this person who was changed after this encounter with Jesus. So, um, we've read about this man um, who, was, who had been an invalid for 30 years, in other words, he couldn't walk. And um, it's, it's incredible. So, so the scene is Jesus in Jerusalem, which was the capital, and he's there to uh, celebrate this great big feast of the Jews. And the Bible says that he entered through the sheep gate. And uh, this gate was used to bring the sheep through to the temple for sacrifice. And um, we often had this picture in our minds, or at least I used to, of Jerusalem as like a really smart place where all of this stuff was taking place. Hundreds of sheep coming through, they're going to leave droppings, aren't they? Yes, little droppings everywhere. There's going to be the smell of sheep. There's going to be the bear, 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 bear of, uh, of sheep as, as they're coming through the sheep gate at all different times of the day, ready for, uh, ready for the sacrifice. And Jesus comes there, and he comes down to this, this pool of Bethsaida. And lying around the pool are the poor, the sick, the blind, the lame and paralysed people. Everybody who was there has a massive problem, a problem which had overcome them at a point. And remember what I said, that everybody needs a change. Well, all of these people, they needed healing in some way or the other. The blind needed sight. The deaf needed to hear. Those who couldn't walk needed to, get the, uh, needed to be able to walk again. Now, part of, the, uh, part of the problem was, was that it was said, and we read the scripture, that, that an angel of the Lord would appear sometimes and stir up the water, and then people jump in and get healed. And everybody was laying there waiting for that. But do you know what? There has never been a recorded time that that ever took place. There's nothing in history, there's nothing in Jewish myth, there's, there's nothing there. It was a story that somebody made up and gave those waters magical, myth, mystical powers that if you laid round there, that, that if the water started to bubble, that if you got in there first, that you'd be healed. Well, people had been there for many, many years, nobody had been healed, and all the rest of it. So how about that? So here was this man, and we don't know what his name is, this... Oh, what should we call him? Let's call him Colin, shall we? Right, so Colin had been laying there for 38 years. Now listen to this, I had to do some maths on this. 
All right, now you all know me. I'm useless at maths, aren't I? I'm really, I'm really, really bad. I'm, I'm awful. So 38 years. Here's some figures. That's 13,870 days that he was staying there. 13,870 days. That's 332,880 hours. Well, an hour's quite a long time. Look at your watch, you think, oh my word. So like that. So into the minutes, it's, uh, it's, it's 19 million, uh, 972,800 minutes. So again, that's quite long, isn't it? And then you take it into seconds, I'll try to be clever here, but I think I, I, think I may have tried to be too clever because I don't know whether I can pronounce these numbers here. It's this. It's 1 billion, 198 million, 368,000 seconds. There we go, did it. Which is a lot, isn't it? 1 billion, 198 million, 368,000 seconds. And whatever number you use on this, it was a long, long time, wasn't it? Whether it's the 13,000 um, days, if it was a such and such minutes, and if it, was seconds, it was a long time. And he was paralysed, he was waiting for his turn to go in the water. Probably he was always a bit down because he thought, you know, other people are jumping in the, in the water to me. When my turn came, well, his turn came that day that Jesus changed him, that Jesus came. And that always makes a difference. Every time in God's word that Jesus turned up somewhere, there was a change. Every single time, every single person that he came across, there was always a change. And often Jesus asked the question, what do you want me to do? Now that's rather strange, isn't it? It's a bit like having, it's a bit like having your house on fire and you're standing at the window and the fire brigade turns up and the fireman comes up the ladder and says, um, um, what would you like me to do? What would you say? You would say, get me out of here, quick. You know, get me on the ladder. You know, please save me. You would say that. But every time Jesus, he asked the question, what do you want me to do? So we're just going to look at four Fairly quickly, we're going to look at four things that, that have to happen that as we make our change. And I'm just going to have a little sip of water. My throat's ever so, ever so dry. Oh, it's drier than a duck's beak. So the first thing is this. Number one, we have to decide if we need, if we need to change. We have to decide if we want to change. That's, that's the first thing. And in John's Gospel, um, chapter 5, which we're looking at, and 5 and 6, Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? Well, in other words, Jesus asked him, do you want a change in, in your condition? The man was paralysed for 38 years. He, he couldn't help himself. We may feel Jesus is asking silly questions. You know, because I remember the first time I read this years ago as a brand new question, I thought, that's a bit of a dumbo question to ask. Do you want to get well? Of course he did. You know, he was paralysed. If you were paralysed, who wouldn't want to walk? I remember after my accident and, and I could hardly walk, all I could think about was running. Now, I never thought about running in my life before that. I hate running. I was even thinking about walking up some hills and I dislike hills. I'd rather live in Holland where it's all flat rather than have lots of hills. But anyway, that's another story. But, you know, I, I would guess that he wanted to get, he wanted to be healed. But first, the man had to decide if he wanted a change. And we have to decide, don't we, whether we want the change in our life or not, or whether we want to carry on with the same old, same old situations in our lives. Now listen to this. Romans chapter 12 and verse 22 says this. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. So it's, it's basically the scripture is saying that we have to decide you know, what we want to do. And then when we tie it in with God's word, it will transform our mind. So all of a sudden we have the faith to want to change. We need to renew our mind. Change has to first begin from inside our mind. That's where it starts. That's where a lot of these things take place. We have to decide if we want to change. And I've met so many people over the years, you know, different things. And, and I say, look, you know, let's, let's work through this. Let's, let's, try, let's try God's way. But often it's, well, actually, I'm, 
kind of comfortable where I am. I don't like it, but at least I know how this works. And I think, mate, that's like standing inside a dark room when the sun shines outside and never wanting to go outside. We have to decide to change. Now listen, it's, it's actually possible that this man didn't want to change. Think about this. For those 38 years, he had got used to being in that situation. So his life, he was, he was sitting by the pool every day. And like, uh, uh, like that little video said, it wasn't a swimming pool with water slides and you know, mocktails, that sort of stuff. It was just a big, it, it was a great big hole in the ground for the water that sometimes they'd also w uh, wash the sheep in. So I wouldn't really fancy going in there with sheep. No, that wouldn't you know, quite be good. So he begged, as, the, as they all did. Um, so he would be given money at times. And because that was inside or near the temple, your know, people were more likely to be generous where they're going through there because of the Jewish customs about feeding the poor. So he would be given uh, money, food. So if he got healed, then there'd be the chance that he would lose his job, that he would lose the money coming in, that he would lose um, the sympathy, that he, would, that he would also lose his friends. Because I can imagine... The, you know, quite a number of them sitting there, they would know their stories, they would, they would talk to each other. He would, he would lose all of that. If he got healed and he had to change, if he had to walk away from there, then all that he had known, that life he'd known, would be gone. And I can imagine him getting worried because, well, he didn't have any skills. He, hadn't, he didn't have a trade. And in those days, you, know, you, you, you had to have a trade or you worked in the fields or you, you, know, you had something to do. He didn't have any of those qualifications that we know because he sat there all day. So that was a big thing as well to think about it, to leave that security, you know, to leave all of those things and to step out into something new. And we can be like that with relationships, with, with life, with jobs, with all of this sort of stuff and actually have a fear. But what, you know, we know what it's like there, even though we don't like it, but what happens if that goes wrong? But do you know what I always say? And it's this, but what happens if it goes right? And, th and that's a change of mind, isn't it? You know, because often people say, well, what if it goes wrong? Hmm. But what if it goes right? Wow! Just think about that. You know, when God is in it, it will always succeed. So think about this. So for these years, he had accepted his condition. And he'd accepted that his condition was, was going to be the final thing for his life. Therefore, Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? If we want to change, we have to decide that we want to change that situation. The second thing that he, uh, uh, Jesus um, did was this. S stop making excuses. I am a master of excuses if I don't want to do something. Jane will tell you. you know, I'll, I'll always come up with something why I shouldn't tidy my side of the room or sweep up my office room or, or empty the bin. Seriously, seriously. You know, sometimes it even impresses me. You know, the excuses that I come up with, I'll be honest with you, you know, like that. But this man in uh, verses uh, 6 and 7, he didn't answer Jesus' question because Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? He didn't answer it. He does not say he wants to be healed. He just complains about his condition. And many times we, we have only complaint about others. We have only complaint about our situations. There's, there's some people I talk to, you know, no matter what's happened, they will always begin with the awful problems. Now, that's fine because, because I don't mind listening. But some people never get past that. And this man tells Jesus how unfortunate he is. He's had a lot of troubles. He's had a lot of complaint. Now, there comes a time when we have to stop complaining about life. And we have to say, do you know what? I want to change. Because that's a big step. Because when we stop saying, I can't change, I can't do this, it's like our feet are in quicksand. But that moment that we start to say, I'm going to stop making excuses in my life, God will you help me, it's like your feet come out of the mud. Like that. And then you can start taking little steps, little steps towards that freedom that you need. And, and, and that's important to do that. And I'm talking to myself here. I, I really am. In some situations, I'm facing a couple, of, a couple of things at the moment where I kind of know what I've got to do, 
but it's kind of like, oh, you know, I can make every excuse not to do it. So, like I said, I'm preaching myself. One is leaving the job. And um, you know, I kind of go into semi-retirement so I can spend more time at church and writing and, you know, there are so many other things. You know, I kind of know it's, I kind of know it's right to step away, but you know, I'm being honest with you. There's a part of me which thinks, oh, it's all right. You know, like that. Anyway, so God's about to change us. So the third thing is to act in faith. And verses 8 to 9, let me read this. Then Jesus said to him, get up. Hmm. He was saying that to a man who's lying on the floor. Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. Absolutely fantastic. Jesus didn't really say much to the man, didn't he? He didn't go into a great big theological um, explanation of why he was going to be healed. He didn't say, okay, let me I'll walk you through a 16-point plan for the Bible about why you're going to be healed, about why you should be changed. He didn't preach a sermon to him, none of that. He just looked down at him, and I can imagine, say, get up, pick up your mat. And at that moment, the power of God came, and he was healed. But even then, in that moment, that man had a choice. Because he was laying there. And he had to make a movement. He had to do something. He could get up and start walking, or he could just lie there in the same situation. Now, there were many reasons for him not to walk. You know, I've already mentioned about how he would lose his friends and money, all this sort of stuff. But there was something more than that, because it was a Sabbath day, which was a day of rest for the Jews. And they had so many rules and regulations, it was worse than the council. You know, you know, oh, can you put up a fence? Oh, no, you've got to fill in the form with 963 and a half you know, different reasons why and all, all that sort of stuff, you know, you know, that kind of thing. You know, but, you know, but the Jews, they had this, all these rules and regulations. Now, nobody was supposed to lift anything on that day. You couldn't lift anything. If you, if you were walking along and you had, say, like a little needle um, through the thread of your top or like a safety pin and the Pharisees saw you, you'd get in trouble because you were carrying a load. I mean, it is a load of old rubbish, actually, but, you know, but that was, that, was the rules that, <laughs> that was the rules that they had. But listen, when he listened to what Jesus said to him, everything changed and sometimes we have to go against the flow of the society, the flow of what we think is right. And we have to say, actually, God has said this. Get up and walk. Get out of that situation. Think about what Jesus would do in that situation. Listen to what perhaps um, God's word is, is teaching us. And that is what makes the change. And think about this. For 38 years, the mat carried that man. Because there would have been a couple of poles, a bit like a stretcher, and people would have carried that. So for 38 years, the mat carried him. Now he was healed, he was carrying that mat tucked under his arm. Listen, whatever circumstances we go through, if we act in faith, we can overcome them by God. And that's what happened there. That man said, do you know what? The waters don't work. Hmm. Nothing else has worked. But here's this Jesus. Wow. And he didn't know much about him. He wasn't in church. There wasn't even the, the church at that time. There was nothing. That was just a man who had come there and he experienced the power of God. And, and he got up and walked. And that's what we need to change the circumstances that we're in. Because we, we do have the Jesus of the Bible now that we can read about. We have, we have church. We have people who can teach and to... And to encourage us, we've got all kinds of testimonies and witnesses about healings and about, about changed lives. That man didn't have that. So that makes it even more incredible that that man would take Jesus at his word. Why? Because he was desperate. I believe that he'd reached that point when he was so desperate that if somebody came up to him and said, look, you know, if you bang two pieces of wood together and rub your tummy, you know, um, something might, might work. You see, Jesus always comes to us at those times when it's the right time. You see, so many times we can try to change at the wrong time. It's as simple as that. But there is a right time when Jesus steps into a situation and says, now is the time. Because remember, there is no chance. We don't believe in luck. There is no such thing as luck. Everything for the Christian is ordained or planned by God. From the moment we're conceived to the, to the moment of our last breath, to everything that we go through, that when we submit our lives fully to the Lord, he says... Yep, I'm taking care of you. 
And just the last thing, just as we finish, in John, um, again, chapter 5, in, in verse 14, it says this. Later Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, now bear in mind that in verse 13 it's this, the man who was healed had no idea who it was, for Jesus had slipped away into the crowd that was there. So he didn't know that was Jesus. Later on Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, see, you are well again. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. And the man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Is that when God does touch us and does change us, we have this command, stop sinning. There's that beautiful um, a story, well, not story, that true life account about the woman who was caught in adultery and she was dragged out, she was flown on the, uh, she was thrown on the f- floor in front of all these people and they were just stoned her to death because that, that was the penalty for it. But, but Jesus came along and they, uh, well, they asked him and they said, um, yeah, should we stone her? No, blah, 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 blah. And it said that Jesus started writing in the, uh, in the dirt, and nobody knows what, but that was probably the sins of all of these people who were, who were accusing her. And Jesus looked up at her and he said, uh, he said, lady, he said, where are those who accuse you? And she said, well, they're all gone. He said, yeah. Now, go and sin no more. In fact, he said, I don't condemn you either. Now go and sin no more. Now often that's, that's missed from from people who talk about things, but what Jesus was saying here, go and live your life, but don't sin no more, or else something worse may happen. That's what he said to that lady, and he said it to various other people. Change your life, but don't get back into old ways, because things could, you know, they could take you back again. So, let's just think about it, just as we finish, we're going to have another song, but just think about this. Do you need a change in your life today? And I'm not just sort of you know, changing your socks or something like that, you know, but is there something in your life, you know, where it's like, you know, perhaps it's got on top of you, you don't know where to turn, you don't know the next steps, all of these things. Well, if that's the case, that's the time just to pray and just to say, Lord, would you meet me where I am? And would you take me out of where I am? Would you, would you help? Would you help this entire situation? You know, would you help me to walk out of this awful um, problem or, or situation. And let's just remember these, these four little things. First, we have to decide that we need a change. Secondly, we need to stop making excuses for our situation. You see, I know that I need to get healthy, right? and I can make all kinds of excuses, like, oh, my bad back, oh, I can't do this. Well, that's just an excuse. I, I can do it, and that way I'll lose weight. That's one of my challenges. And number three, we must act in faith against the circumstances. Because this man couldn't walk, the circumstances were, there, oh, there was no hope. And sometimes what we're facing goes against everything, everything, every kind of um, realistic thing that we can change. But when God comes in, he can take us out of them. And fourth, if if we are involved in, in sinful situations, it could be thoughts, actions, it can be you know, things which we know are against God's word, then we just need to say, Lord, you know, yeah, between me and you, will you help me overcome this? And every time we will. Do you know why? Because you are his child. God is your father, our great heavenly father. And he wants the best for us. It doesn't always mean that we get blessings and Rolls Royces and 16 bedroom mansions and you know, like a butler to bring us our poached eggs in the morning. It doesn't mean that. But what it does mean is that he watches us and he says, do you know what? I am going to bring a blessing into your life. It may not feel like it. Circumstances might not change. You may still put on the same underpants and trainers each day. You know, um, things may not change a great deal. But what it will be is that you will be back in the flow of, of where God wants you to be. Because sometimes we can be so emotionally, spiritually um, crippled, if you like, that we can't walk the way that God wants us to. But Jesus, as we're seeing today, he is in the healing business and he always gets those who can't walk to walk. He always gets those who can't see to see. He always gets the deaf to hear, uh, the mute to speak. Every single time he raises the dead. Miracles are the family business. So let's just pray and then we'll have, and then we'll have a last um, song together. 
So, Lord, Lord, we want to thank you that, that you are mighty, that you are powerful.